Hi, I'm Benjamin Daniels of the Dime Analytics team. And here with my colleagues, Luisa Cardoso and Chris Bjarkefer, we're going to introduce our recently released data package, IE Field Kit. IE Field Kit is designed to bring a data science mindset to data collection and cleaning, which have often suffered from low levels of standardization, documentation, and replicability. These tasks are often coordinated with teams that are not primarily programmers. So using code directly for this work is often inaccessible to others. IE Field Kit bridges that gap by using self-documenting spreadsheets to do tasks that would otherwise be done in code. Not only does this mean that anyone can participate in and review the work, it creates easily readable documentation for the future. There are three core commands in IE Field Kit. IE Test Form ensures that best practices are used in ODK data collection surveys. IE Duplicates and IE CompDup identify and resolve duplicates and data as it comes in. IE Codebook uses spreadsheet codebooks to clean, append, or document data. Together, these commands create almost complete documentation for a data collection workflow. For more details, check the Dime Wiki IE Field Kit page and look for our forthcoming Stata Journal paper. We hope you enjoy. Hello, my name is Christopher, and I will show you how to use the command IE Test Form. IE Test Form is a command specific to the data collection software ServiceITU ODK. The other two commands in this video are not specific to ServiceITU. IE Test Form can help you to do better research, as research quality depends on data quality, and data quality depends on the quality of your data collection, where your questionnaire form is your most important tool. If you have used ServiceITU before, you know that your form is already tested when you upload it to their server. However, they test for syntax errors, meaning that they test if there's any part of your programming that does not make sense to the computer on their server. While testing syntax is important, it does not test if best practices to collect high quality data are followed. But this is where the command IE test form comes in. There are countless of best practices and they differ between disciplines, so IE test form does not test for all of them. It's simply not possible. But IE test form tests for a large number of best practices based on the experience on the several hundreds of servers we have conducted here at Dime. To start, I'm going here to ServiceTO's dashboard. This is how the server dashboard looks. And I will upload my form and I will show that there's no syntax errors in the form I'm about to work with. So I upload the form, now the tests are being run, and here's the result. The form uploaded successful. There was no errors in my syntax errors in my form. In Stata, I prepared two do files. The first one that you see to the right is the master do file. If you want to know more about master do files, you should search for Dime Wiki master do files in any search engine of your choice, and you can see our guide to master do files. But in short, it creates different globals where it store file paths to different folders in a project folder. So each of these glo globals that you see here becomes keywords to different folders. This makes folders and folder paths easy to work with in Stata. So I'll start by running this. Then I go to the second do file that I prepared where I'm going to run IE test form. With these keywords, it's easy to say IE test form using and specify the form we want to use and specify the location on the name of the report we want to create. So I run this code as well. It takes a few seconds and if it's successful, you will have this blue link. And if you click this blue link, you'll get to the report that IE test form just created for you. Here's the report. Let's look a bit closer at the report. At the top of the report, you can see who wrote the report, the username of their computer, when they wrote the report. You can also see the form ID, form title, and form versions. All of these information come from your service at your settings tab. And you can also see where the form was saved on your computer at the time of running this command. This is all super useful if you ever time in the, any time in the future need to look back at an old report. The rest of the report are just tests. Only tests that found something are included. So, and each test starts with a title, a short description, each example that it found, and also a link to the wiki page. 
If you have any question about any of the best practices that I test for and choose, you should always start by reading this wiki article first. The first test is about leading or trailing spaces, spaces before or after a string. Most of the time Service Studio can handle this and this will not cause an error. But this is a great example of something that if we want to collect data of really high quality, we have to pay attention to these levels of details. So you see at two cases, there's list names that have a space before and a space after. To be very precise, you should remove them. And if you wonder why, you should read the article for all the other details. But I want to show this. This row column here shows which, which row in the form you will find this list. That makes it so much faster to correct anything that I test forms output for you. We will not focus more on that test. Instead, I want to go to this question. If you're familiar with Service Studio, the view to the left is probably familiar to you. This is how it looks when you fill in data on a questionnaire using a web browser. This particular question asks what types of ex examinations a patient received. All the answer option looks good, but there's actually some errors here. To show the errors, let's look on the right hand side. That's the questionnaire form. You can see the answer options here that goes into the question to the left, on the, in the left view. But if you look closely, you see there's two answer options have the code 5. This is not a syntax error in ODK in Service CTU. And if we were to collect data using this form, then we would have no way to differentiate the answer palpitation from the answer NA. They would both be represented as 5 in our data. And further, you see there's one option called other or label other. You don't see it to the left. And that's because there's a typo in the list name. There's two M's used here, for example. But we have long list of many, maybe thousands answer options in very big surveys. It's easy to make these typos and they're very difficult to catch if you were look for them manually. Both these errors can be fine through care for piloting. But piloting is expensive. It takes a long time and requires a lot of people in the field. And piloting is much better spent trying to answer qualitative questions like, could this question be answered in a better way instead of just finding typos and small errors like the two that I just showed. So instead of spending week, days or weeks finding this manually, you can use eye test form that just spots these errors in a matter of seconds. So let's go back to the report. And if we scroll down, you see here this test duplicated list codes. And in this report, you listed on row 15 and row 16 in the list name exam, exactly what we looked at before, there's the same code being used, the same code being used twice for these two label options. If you have this, you have the row number, you can quickly look into this and you don't have to spend well valuable piloting time to find an error like this. Also, if you scroll to the end of the report, you will also see unused choice list. You have two unused choice lists. These are actually not used in the form. This is not an error. They will not be used. But an unused choice list is a sign of an error, just like exam here. Because of a typo, it has a different name now. Services 2 and ODK will treat that as a different choice list and it's not being used. It's okay if you leave someone. I think I personally think it's cleanest to clean them, but it's okay if you leave them, but make sure that none of them is a typo. Hi, my name is Luisa, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use IUFieldKit's IUDuplicates command. The first thing I'm going to do is to run my master script so I can set the adequate folder paths. Then I'll open a pre-processed version of the dataset created by answering the patient survey that we tested with IU test form. I'm going to browse this dataset so you can see what it looks like. 
This data set has eight observations and the relevant identifying variable is called patient ID. This variable contains two pairs of observations with duplicated ID values that ID duplicates will help us address. And of course, the data set has many other variables. For the purposes of this section, the variables we're interested in, apart from the ID variable, are the enumerator nodes that contains comments from enumerators, including one about what ID was used, and the observation key that is created by the data collection platform to identify each submission made to its server. Now let's go back to our do file to understand how these three variables will be used with IE duplicates to understand the duplicated entries in the survey. IE duplicates basic syntax is this. First, we indicate the name of the ID variable that should not have duplicated entries. We then set the file path to the Excel sheet where we will document the process of fixing the duplicated entries. I'm going to save it on the documentation folder of my project. Finally, we need to specify which variable uniquely identifies observations in the current data set. So when we determine the actions that address the duplicated entries, state a note to which observations these actions should be applied. In this case, the unique variable is called key. So let's run this command. As you can see, it's given us a message. This message is telling us that the command has identified the two pairs of duplicated entries in the data set. It's also saying that the duplicated observations are still in the data set. In fact, if we browse the data, we can see that they are still here. It is also given as a link to the file where the duplicated entries were reported. The first column in this file is showing us that ID duplicates has identified two cases of duplicated patient IDs for IDs 1111 and 2560. Columns B to G are filled by the command itself. They contain metadata on the corrections that can be used by the research team in the future to understand how IDs were fixed. Columns E to I are the ones we will fill to tell our duplicates how to fix the duplicated entries. Finally, looking at the list of this column will help us determine what caused the duplicated entries to be created in the first place. It lists all the variables in the dataset that are different across the two observations with the same ID. In the case of ID 1111, all the variables in the dataset are the same except for metadata fields. This looks like a case where a submission was uploaded twice and the observation that I choose to keep will not affect the analysis. So I will just keep the first one and remove the second. This is done by filling in the correct and drop columns. In the correct column, I will write correct for the observation I want to keep. In the drop column, I will write drop for the observation that I want to be removed from the data set. I will then grab my initials so that in the future, anyone knows that if they have questions about this, they can come talk to me. I will also add notes explaining that I have identified that these are duplicated submissions of the same survey. Note that the case of ID 2560 is more complicated as there is a long list of variables where these two observations differ. We would typically follow up with the field team immediately while these interviews are still fresh in their memories to verify the source of this issue. But, as you may remember, we already have enumerated comments, so what I'm going to do is to edit my code to include the notes fields on this Excel file. Before I go back to Stata, I will save and close this report so Stata can access this Excel file. Note that I am replacing the existing file with my changes. Going back to the do file, I will now include the enumerator notes on my Excel spreadsheet by using the keep vars option and indicating the enumerator notes variable inside it. So now I'll run the do file and let's see what happens. The first thing you can see is that the error message has changed. It now says that there is only one duplicated ID still unresolved. 
So it recognizes the correction that I've made to ID 1111. It also says, however, that the variable patient ID does not uniquely identify the current data set. In fact, if I browse this data, you will see that both observations with IDs 1111 are still left in this data set. This is because IE duplicates will not make changes to your data set unless the force option is specified. So if I wanted to do any operations that require me to have a unique identifier in my data set, for example, merging it with a backchecks data set before I heard back from the field team and knew how to address the remaining duplicates, I would need to drop the duplicated observations. So running the command with the force option will return a data set where the duplicated entry for by D1111 that I selected to be dropped is no longer present, only the correct entry, and no observations with ID 2560 are present. Since IE duplicates did not know which of the observations to drop, it just dropped both of them. Now let's go back to the report and look at those enumerator comments. The note says that the enumerator entered a different ID from the real patient's ID because of some technical issue. To fix this issue, I will assign the correct ID value to this observation and I will indicate that the other observation with ID 2560 is correct. I will also add my notes here for my team's future reference. I will once more save my changes and run the code, now without making any additional modifications. The message now reads that there are no remaining duplicates since the dataset has been updated with the changes listed in the Excel sheet. Now we have one observation for ID 1111 one for ID 2560, and one for the new ID specified. So the result of this process is one uniquely and fully identified data set and documentation to explain when, how, and by whom decisions were made. This is why we say IE Field Kits creates a self-documenting workflow. Don't forget that changes were made to the data so you need to save it in a new file. Don't replace your raw data. Hi, I'm Benjamin Daniels, and I'll be showing you through the IE Codebook command suite. The IE Codebook commands allow you to describe and edit data using spreadsheets that are easy to read and write. The most common use for IE Codebook is to perform data cleaning. In particular, status rename, recode, and label commands take up a lot of space in code and are tedious to type repeatedly. It's easy to make mistakes with these commands by putting them in the wrong order in code. It's also very hard for another person to read code with lots of these commands and understand quickly what the data set looked like to begin with and what it's intended to look like at the end. This makes debugging data cleaning in code almost impossible, and it makes adding new changes in the future potentially buggy and frustrating. IE Codebook is designed to make data cleaning much easier. No matter how many data sets you have to clean, or how many variables you have to alter. The whole process is reduced to one line of static code, and all your data changes can be checked visually using the spreadsheet rows and columns as a guide. I'm gonna walk you through one use of IE Codebook now. The subcommand, called IE Codebook Apply, allows you to apply any number of rename, recode, and label commands to the open data set using just one line of code. First, let's open the data set that we want to edit. As we can easily see from looking at the labels, it's in need of cleaning. To get started, we'll create a template using the IE Codebook template command.
When typed without an argument and using the location where we want the code book, it recognized that we want to edit the data set in memory. When we go to that location, we find the code book template waiting for us. It has all the information about the current data set and blank spaces where we can input changes. It also has a separate tab for choices, which correspond to value labels in the data. Let's write instructions to the codebook to change some variables. By default, anything we don't change will remain the same, unless we create a conflict like requesting two variables to have the same name. To change the name of a variable, we simply write the new name in the name column. Again, any variables we don't change will be left just as they are. Still, I recommend copying everything over, even if you don't intend to make changes, so the structure of the final data set is clear to the reader of the codebook. If you put a period in one of the name cells, like this, it requests that that variable be dropped from the data set. This can be useful for getting rid of identifying information, like names, at the cleaning stage. To change the label of a variable, we again simply write the new label in the label column. This is pretty easy, huh? Sometimes we want to change the values of a variable. To do that, we can use status recode syntax. Check help recode for a detailed description of how to do that in complex cases, but here I'll illustrate a simple case. Variable b1 is a binary, but it has the values 1 and 2 instead of 0 and 1. We can confirm that by looking at the choices current tab and referring to the corresponding label list. To change this to a 0, 1 binary, we take the following steps. First, we want to change the name and label to correctly describe the new values. Since this variable describes either new or returning patients, we name and label it as the code for new patient. Next, we recode its values by writing the recode rules in the recode current column. We want two to be zero and one to remain one. Finally, we write in the choices sheet the set of choices that we want applied to the variable. We write the label name, the label value, the val and the value label, and IE Codebook will do the rest of the work compiling it and applying it to the data. Since this is a yes-no variable, we can use the existing yes-no label. All we have to do is copy that label name into the corresponding choices cell and it will be automatically applied to that variable. Next we save the codebook. Then we go back to our code. Because nothing else has changed and the data set is already in memory, we can simply change template to apply in the IE codebook command and execute it. When we do this, IE codebook reads all the changes we've written in the codebook and applies them to the data set in memory. If we tab the variable where we change the values, we see the new values and labels have worked. Pretty neat. IE Codebook Apply is very powerful, but that's not all that IE Codebook can do. If you need to clean multiple data sets into the same format so they can be appended together, such as in multiple rounds of data collection, IE Codebook Append provides a special template that lets you do this easily. If you only need to describe your data so that others can use it easily, IE Codebook Export will produce an Excel codebook for you with complete information about your data set. Check the help file or the Dime Wiki for more details on these uses and look for our forthcoming article in the Stata Journal.